exercises for Coldwater High School. First, please remain standing and gentlemen remove your hats for the playing of the national, on national anthem by the Coldwater High School Band. to what some may call an ending, a finish, or a closing. The ending of what some may call an era, an era that has been filled with joy, failure, and of course, learning. We have gone to class, gone to practice, done homework, attended sporting events, and all the while, tried to be just normal kids. But while trying to be just normal kids, we have learned the feeling of excitement, loss, and wonder. I challenge you all to look at this as more of a peak than a summit. This is a peak to a mountain in your life that will be followed by many valleys and crests, all filled with more learning. Please enjoy a summary of our experiences and accomplishments this afternoon, but first please join me in welcoming the foreign exchange students that have joined us this year. As I announce, please you and your host family stand. Elka Knappen from Geldrop, Netherlands, and her host parents, Marlene and Alan from Ranka. <laughs> Stina Eriksson from Sweden, and her host parents, Lori and Anthony Dalo. <laughs> Torin Jorstad from Norway, and her host parents, Tammy and Ed Nisley. from Korea, and her host parent, Sherry Gaff. <laughs> Allison Nam Chai Tai 
from Hong Kong and her host parents, Tammy and Ed Nisley. Next, please join us in acknowledging all of those who have helped us to reach this point in our lives. Congratulations, class of 2007. The past four years we have spent together have been exciting, pleasant, amusing, and exhausting. With the help of our friends and families, we have made memories that will last forever, and we have completed this immense task. But because of our teachers, we will have an education to last a lifetime. To our teachers, you have offered us insight and intellect to our everyday questions in and out of the classroom. From Mr. Henry's knowledge about every religion in the world, to Ms. Kastrock's sports updates, from poetry by candlelight in Miss Biddlecombe's room to candle-scented dissections with Mrs. Nichols, we began to realize that not only did you teach us the basics of your subjects, but about life and how much we had to offer the world. You have taken time to help us succeed and press on with our high school careers, because unlike many of us, you knew how important it was to accomplish our goals and strive to learn as much as we could. Throughout the years, you have grown from educators to friends who listen, understand, and give input. You may not realize it now, but every single teacher at this ceremony has inspired some person in some way to become more than they ever thought they could. I know I have been inspired by my teachers. It may not always seem like you are appreciated, but without your support and knowledge, we would not be graduating today. Eleanor Roosevelt once quoted, many people walk in and out of your lives, but only true friends, friends will leave footprints on your heart. I also believe this to be true with teachers. As we grow and reach for higher education, each educator we have will make a positive influence in our lives. Knowledge is the most precious gift we can receive, and with it, we will be able to make a change. So thank you, teachers at CHS, for giving us this precious gift. You have not only left knowledge in our minds, but footprints on our hearts. Fifteen years ago, it was you tying our shoes and walking us to the bus with our Batman and Cinderella backpacks on for our first days of kindergarten. Ten years ago, it was you holding our hands, walking us to the cafeteria doors, and watching our first elementary music recital. Seven years ago, it was us pushing you aside from holding our hands as we walked with our friends into our elementary farewell awards ceremony. Five years ago, it was our defiant ways that got us into trouble with all middle school teachers, yet you somehow managed to be proud of us as we headed to high school. Two years ago, it was, you telling, uh, it was you yelling at us for not telling you where we were going, who we were going with, and what time we'd be home. <laughs> Last year, it was you telling us to cherish these days while we could because we too would grow old and move on, having only memories and unfulfilled dreams to look back on. Eight months ago, it was you walking us to our cars on the first day of our last year, providing us with a simple good luck and a quick hug. One month ago, it was us posing for the pictures and you taking them as we stood in our tuxedos and dresses on the way to our final senior prom. Two weeks ago, it was you hugging and kissing us, all the while holding back the tears and saying goodbye as we pulled out of the driveway on the way to our last day as high school students. Fifteen minutes ago, you thought this graduation ceremony was about honoring our high school achievements and looking optimistically upon our future lives. Now you know this is not entirely true. As parents, as teachers, as mentors and friends, I would like to take this opportunity to honor you, our parents, the structure and foundation of all our achievements and success, for not simply providing us with unconditional love, but more for molding us, for shaping us, and for guiding us through uncertain times. Your guidance has proven to be immeasurable and strictly incomparable. Your dedication to our well-being, success, and happiness has been nothing short of extraordinary. From our earliest days in preschool to our senior years in high school, it has been you that has stuck it out with us, in the hardest times and in the happiest times, on the worst of days and on the best of days, through our first crushes and first broken hearts, through our first cars and our first traffic violations, through our, per our biggest achievements and our first days of failure. The respect we have gained for you not only as parents, but also as people alike has been immense and will only continue to grow. Although blind to the fact at times and defiant to admit you were often at right, we realize now that it's only you whose love is unbounded and unlimited as you never have failed to stand by our sides. On behalf of myself and the student body I represent, thank you. Thank you parents so much. 
the foundation you have provided us with and the structure you've extend, extended upon that foundation is nothing short of remarkable. This structure is apparent within all aspects of our lives, whether it be exhibiting leadership skills, working together through times of pain and hardship, or simply showing our true character when no, when no one is there to watch. To sum up everything you have provided us with throughout our young careers would be, without question, an impossible task. The growth I have personally seen amongst my peers throughout our schooling has left me awe-inspired. Growth that would be nearly impossible if it were to be lacking the guiding hand of a dedicated parent. If nothing more than to express our gratitude towards you and your years of guidance, we would like to share this ceremony as to not simply honor the accomplishments of Coldwater High School's class of 2007, but to honor the accomplishments and achievement of the Coldwater class and parents of 2007. Please join me in welcoming Kristen Heater to the stadium. <laughs> It is my pleasure to introduce to you at this time the salutatorian for the class of 2007. The salutatorian is Kristen Elizabeth Gibson. Sometimes we got to walk in front of the projector, not too many. <clears throat> At this point, it is my honor to introduce to you the number one student in the class of 2007. They have earned a grade point average exceeding 4.1 during their four years of high school, including 11 semesters of advanced placement studies. We have a tie for valedictorian in the class of 2007. They are Andrew Scott Healy. of many things, God, family, friends, education, and all of the things that have inspired us, challenged us, and encouraged us along the way. And though each of us has their own personal list of people and ideas that have brought them to this day, there is a common idea, a common goal that unites our very different pasts, our present, 
and the unknown of our futures. This thread of unity is success. When we were very young, our parents were the eyes that gauged our success. Our progress was the evidence of our best efforts. We babbled our first incoherent sentences. We learned to swallow solid food. And at each new progress, we heard the praises of the people around us that were our biggest fans. Our parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and guardians. And we recorded these precious moments in our history in the form of all of those embarrassing pictures and videos. Then, these steps to survive in our new world became real steps. First, feebly attempting to crawl, and then building the physical and mental strength to motor ourselves into all sorts of mischief. Then, success became how we could relate to others. We became the good kid or the bad kid, depending on how often we did what we were told. We were held to higher standards. We had to learn how to share, even when it was our favorite toy. We had to learn that loud noises were only appropriate at certain times and never late at night. We had to learn that success meant getting along with people, being obedient, even when our instincts told us differently. Bit by bit, we achieved what we earned, and what we earned was the consequences of our actions. These are the skills that would accompany us to elementary school. That first scary trip to our first classroom, our first backpacks and pencils, our first lunch boxes, our first steps away from home. And these new experiences brought a whole new measurement of success. Our ability to learn became the gauge. We had to prove ourselves in math, science, reading, history, and English. We had our first homework assignments and our first spelling bee. Science projects and field trips took us further into a more independent world where we had to challenge ourselves to learn and to grow. Here, it was our teachers that were our captive audience. They gave us our first grades, they taught us division and multiplication, they helped expand our horizons. And to the foundation of success that had been built earlier in our lives, elementary school helped propel us forward into an even greater unknown. There was nothing more nerve-wracking than our very first day of middle school, a big school with many teachers and classrooms and a whole sea of unfamiliar faces. And as we grew up, both in maturity and in size, we realized that it was now the sea of faces that was our captive audience, the judges of our success. Now, it was not just about being able to accomplish a task, like when we were very young. And it was not just about being able to listen and to do what we were told. It was not just about our ability to learn. Now, it was about what everyone thought of us. It was probably the harshest view of success and the hardest one to survive. As the days at our new school wore on, we realized that there was a certain and acceptable way to act, synonymous with the words cool and uncool. There was a way to dress, a way to talk, and you were successful depending on the image that you portrayed. Now these different and morphing views of success are what continually cause us to strive for more, both to be better people and to make a better world. We must remember to look back at our past successes, embrace and celebrate the successes of the present, and understand that our future success belongs not only to us, but to everyone. Thank you. Now Andrew will address our present successes. As Woody Allen once said, 80% of success is showing up. While this statement may not be entirely true, it certainly captures the essence of high school. Many of our greatest successes have come not from hours upon hours of studying for that one test we just knew we weren't ready for, but from the small efforts inserted into our daily routine at school. Certainly, that passing grade in the class that constantly seemed above your head is a worthwhile accomplishment, but for every miraculous passing grade we achieve, there are many successes that go unnoticed. For many of us, the greatest success of our high school years is simply the discovery of who we are. While it is easy to ask what sort of a fool wouldn't know who he is, that is exactly where we were in life when we first entered this building. For our daily experiences, choices, and consequences, we've all, to some extent, established what our beliefs are, what our values are, and what our goals are. The degree of this success is easy to underestimate. However, when one considers the overwhelming number of adults who have yet to discover who they are, and continue to define themselves by job titles, social groups, and other material standards, our achievement of some sense of self in our four years here becomes an overwhelming success. 
It is unfortunate that two dearly loved members of our class were given less time than the rest of us to develop their sense of self. However, it makes their successes all the greater. Both Jerry and Corey were people who knew who, who knew who they were and what they wanted out of life and should be admired for that. This frenzy of self-growth leads to another success, the formation of lifelong friendships. As we grow and discover who we are, we naturally become distanced from some friends. The success lies not in maintaining as many old friendships as possible, but accepting the need to make new acquaintances and meet new friends. While these successes are certainly important, it is unlikely that any of us would have survived high school had we not overcome the molehills that we routinely made into mountains. During the first few days of our freshman year, simply opening our lockers and getting to class on time was more than enough success for one day. Soon, finding classes and opening lockers were among the least of our concerns, and another monstrous challenge loomed in front of us. Now, four years later, we sit here, just moments away from receiving that mysterious document that seems to carry with it all of the privileges and responsibilities of adulthood, many of us with rather mixed feelings. Despite this emotional disarray, it is important to stop and consider the success of this very moment. We've made it through 12 years of public schooling, facing all of the physical, emotional, and mental challenges that accompany such an education, and have succeeded in overcoming most of them. Fellow members of the class of 2007, I congratulate you on all of your past successes and wish you the best of luck in all of your future successes. Teachers and staff, I thank you for all of your help and support over the past four years. Many of you have been more than just teachers. You have been friends and counselors. Your guidance has influenced all of us for the better and we owe much of who we are today to you. Parents and family, I thank you for all of your support, both financial and emotional. Without you, none of us would be here today celebrating our success as we enter into the world of adulthood. Thank you. Can I can now speak to you about your coming successes. It would seem that a prominent goal in life is success. But what does this success look like? The meaning of success is elusive in its very nature. Success lends itself more to be described as a mindset or a state of being rather than a set of rigidly defined circumstances. Each one will define success differently in their life, and yet we all know that it is of great value. The students here today have indeed succeeded in the past, and we honor them for their accomplishments in the present. However, this ceremony marks only the beginning of an uncertain future for each one of us. The future is an unpredictable path filled with countless demands and difficulties. As we each search for our own success in life, we will go our separate ways. Some of us will continue our education at numerous colleges, universities, trade schools, and technical institutions. Others will join the military, touring abroad, and serving our country. Some will soon venture out into this world to begin new lives on their own, while others will stay home to support families. Each of us will inevitably enter the workforce, becoming contributing members of society. Sitting here are the future doctors, lawyers, and business people of this generation. I am sure that a number of individuals among us will go on to become very successful by societal standards. However, others may seek more outwardly humble employment as teachers, nurses, or homemakers. While these occupations are perhaps less fiscally rewarding, they provide an entirely separate standard for quantifying success. Perhaps it is from these that we may learn the most about what success is. Success should not be defined by monetary gain, nor the achievement of career goals. Success is neither a measure of wealth nor one's accomplishments. No, success should not be measured as society has defined it, but instead it should be measured as the degree of one's own personal fulfillment in life. Such fulfillment can be attained only through personal commitment. The greatest opportunity we will each experience lies in the current and future relationships we will have. The friends and family sitting here today have formed the foundations we will each continue to build on. We will venture out into this world, meeting new people and making new friends. 
old friends will grow distant, yet never be forgotten. New friends will become best friends as life memories are created and shared. Each of these friends, both old and new, will be a testament to our character and our success. For many, starting a family will be another significant transition in life. This commitment begins a long road, sure to be filled with trials as well as solace and happiness. As we start our fa own families, we will seek to raise our children in a loving and secure home. Our success in our families will be measured by our willingness to put forth what effort is required, by our communication, and by our love for one another. Beside this commitment, none other should take precedence. Even beyond the scope of our personal relationships, we, have, we each have the chance to influence our world. Being active in the community allows for each one to give of themselves, contribute their ideas, and make a difference. Whether it be to volunteer your time coaching Little League, or to be politically active in any of a number of local organizations, make the decision to give back. Success is not of yourself, but what you give to one another. To the class of 2007, as you make this transition into your future, always remember, make new friends, but never forget the old. Visit new places, but remember your home. Continue to learn always, and let your ideas be heard. You are the future of this community, state, and nation, and the future holds profound opportunities for each one of you. I personally wish you the very best in your life journey, and may you find success wherever you search for it. Thank you. Sarah Wilson will now present this year's Presidential Scholars. Presidential Scholars are those students who have completed a stipulated course of study. This national award was established to encourage students to achieve at the highest academic standards by recognizing and rewarding them for educational excellence. Each Presidential Scholar has achieved a minimum GPA of overall 3.5, a minimum score in the 85th percentile on National Achievement Tests, and each has earned at least four credits in English, three in Science, three in Math, four in Social Studies, and two in Foreign Languages. This year, 23 students were thus distinguished for receipt of this national award. Would the following Presidential Scholars and their parents please rise and remain standing, and would you please hold your applause until all the students have been introduced. Tyler Bartlett. Corey Bassage, Allison Baus, <laughs> Catherine Burroughs, Julia Carpenter, Catherine Castile, Caitlin Cooper, Brian Custer, Lauren Fitch, Caitlin Flint, Kristen Gibson, Keely Gruner, Andrew Healy, Kristen Heater, Nathan Nisley, Ashley Mefford, Zachary Mills, Elizabeth Patch, Nicholas Fos, Derek Tubbs, Roger Vela, and Elise Wynn. Sarah Wilson. In 1993, 14 years ago, the class of 2007 began preschool, which was then one of the biggest challenges we had ever encountered. We faced the obstacles of separating from our parents for a few hours, interacting with kids we had never met before, and learning the always challenging concept of sharing. Kindergarten soon came and went, as did the challenges of counting to 100, perfecting the alphabet song, and learning the different shapes and colors. 
In elementary school, we faced many new obstacles. We improved our reading abilities, learned several cardinal rules, including treat others the way you want to be treated, and keep hands, feet, and objects to yourself. And recess became a time not only to have fun with your friends, but also to chase the person you had a crush on. After elementary school, the Jefferson, Gerard, Washington, Edison, Lincoln, and Lakeland students all united to face our next big challenge in life, middle school. At Lake Middle School, we faced the obstacles of finding a locker partner, managing our bean bucks wisely, suffering through 12 minutes of Channel One News every morning, cleaning off our own lunch tables, stressing over whether to bring our parents to back to school day, and deciding whether or not to actually dance at the dances. It was in August of 2003 that we all began high school, and the daily challenges we encountered became much more complicated. Lunchtime talk was no longer just about who had the best lunchbox. And for some of us, who we had chased at recess just four years before had become much less appealing. We are now challenged at home by our parents, in school by our teachers and friends, in sports by our coaches, and by ourselves. We struggled with getting to school on time, understanding the concepts in physics or calculus, dealing with the chaos during homecoming week, finding people we could count on, and we struggled with losing two important people whom we had known and loved. The many challenges that we have faced throughout our lives is what shapes us and guides us. Challenges are a chance for us to demonstrate how much we know and how much more we have to learn. Their effects remind us of where we have been and what we have overcome. Bernice Johnson Reagan once said, life's challenges are not supposed to paralyze you. They're supposed to help you discover who you are. We now face the difficult challenge of saying goodbye to the counselors, teachers, and friends that have impacted our lives at Coldwater High School. We will now encounter new experiences with new people in new surroundings. Every day will have its new challenges. As we deal with these new challenges, we must remember the lessons we learned in our past. We have to remember what we learned in preschool, how to share, and what we learned in elementary school, to treat others with respect. Many of us often get so caught up in other things, we forget the lessons we learned and forget to follow the rules we once knew. If we all face every challenge that life throws our way with the knowledge gained from previous experiences, we can make a significant impact on the world. The ultimate challenge in life is to make a difference. Somehow, some way, we must all positively change the world. Let us all, graduates, parents, relatives, faculty and friends, leave here today remembering the legacy which our friend and classmate Jerry Holt left us. Jerry wrote, I want to do something fabulous. I want to do something to make a positive impact on the world before I leave it. It's left to the opinion what kinds of impacts are most needed or most important, but something positive at all, something positive for humanity be it in art or literature or politics or human rights or the environment, I want to make something out of my opportunities. <clears throat> Let us be challenged by Jerry's passionate words and may her remarkable determination inspire everyone to face life with such purpose. Thank you. present the John Vance Award. <clears throat> John Vance is a 1975 graduate of Coldwater High School. We believe he represents the highest standards of character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25th, 1982, John lost a year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, the faculty and staff of Coldwater High School honor Kristen Elaine Heater, who represents the highest standards that John exemplified. Kristen, would you please come forward to be recognized?
Will the members of the class of 2007 please rise? On behalf of the faculty and administration of Coldwater High School, I present the class of 2007 to the Board of Education, and in doing so, verify that each member has met the requirements for a diploma and is entitled to all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. By the authority of the state of Michigan vested in the Board of Education and by them delegated to me as president, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of Coldwater High School. You may be seated. Yep, will the graduates then please continue to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2007, Bailey Jo Albright, <laughs> Roxanne Lynn Kruger, <laughs> Kristen Elaine Heater. Zachary Andrew Mills. Mary Therese Castle. Sarah Naomi Wilson. Derek Thomas Tubbs. <laughs> Catherine Ann Burroughs. <laughs> Andrew Scott Healy. <laughs> Caitlin Ann Flint. Kristen Elizabeth Gibson. <laughs> Stina Anna Margareta Erickson. <laughs> Torin Johansson Jorstad. Nicholas Allen Faust. <laughs> Kristen Michelle Taylor. <laughs> Costantinos Demosthenes Daphnis. <laughs> Tyler Stephen Bartlett. Andrew Joseph Bachheim, Jr. <laughs> Rachel Elaine Mendelson. <laughs> Melissa Sue Scott.
Robert John Hughes. <laughs> Megan Sharon Houts. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Hobbs. <laughs> Allison Christine Baus. Leslie Nicole Selzer. Lauren Fern White. Devin James Inman. Brian Allen Custer. Renee Dawn Robinson. Christine Grawl. Amber Nicole White. Dustin Lee Hilliard. Joshua Scott Washburn. Roger John Bella. Larita Dawn Hankins. Sonia Jelaine Shepherd. Christopher Timothy Jordan. Jeffrey Michael Scott Eugene Zeems. Amanda Jean Fish. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Swain. <laughs> Rebecca Elizabeth Stoy. <laughs> Autumn Rain Bregg. Andrew James Briscoe. Trevor James Keel. Elise Nicole Wooten. William Martin Bailey. Jeremiah Jonathan Darren Jack. <laughs> Chelsea Elizabeth Jax. <laughs> Mohammed Mohammed Yaya. Corey Allen Bassage. <laughs> Tyler Owen Griggs.
Kendrick Lloyd Dunn the second. Nathan Daniel Johnson. Andrew Paul Weigel. Michael Philip LaFountain. Bracey Faye Hoyt Norton. Ashley Marie Brown. Lita May Jo Miriam. Kayla Marie Terrian. Amanda Jo Sharp. Tanika Denise, Tanika Denise Danley. <laughs> Crystal Ann Wotry. <laughs> Michael David Clare. <laughs> Justin Lee Curtis. Erica Emily Christ. Elka Knappen. Corey Grant White. Corey Glenn Heater. Marcus Allen Winchester. <laughs> Jeffrey Lee Warner. <laughs> Alia Kiad Abdulrab. <laughs> Kayla Nicole DeSico. Danica Ray Jaquig. <laughs> Nicholas Allen Carrion. <laughs> Ashley Ann Morgan. <laughs> Benjamin James Glendenning. Megan Nicole Ledger. <laughs> Michael Stephen Kaspersky. <laughs> Corey Patrick Post. <laughs> Nathan John Nisley. Lauren Barbara Fitch. Tess Elizabeth Danner. Tyler Ramsey Harris. Patrick. Martin Rossino. Corey Lee Kirk. Jaron Allen Utrecht.
Mark David Pearson. <laughs> Philip Andrew Dixon. <laughs> Zachary William Stempion. Randy Thomas Kruger. Jesse Faye Seiler. Lacey May Boyer. Stephanie Lynn Hall. Nicole Michelle Ernsberger. Barbara Juanita Centers. Kristen Michelle Hall. Corey William Herendy. Danielle Marie Moore. <laughs> Jenna Christine Holly. <laughs> Nicole Elise Rurka. <laughs> Katie Jo Watts. Jacob Zachariah Cole. Daniel Jeffrey Breen. Logan Ryan Matthews. Sean Robert Springstead. Lace De Lambre. <laughs> Ashley K. Coco. Aaron Daniel Piotrowski. Jack Lee Versaw the second. Luke Douglas Rhodes. Benjamin Shea Iverson. Kevin Julius Uhas. James Norman Mock. Scott Jeffrey Rhodes. Michael Anthony Schott. Michael Robert Kunkel. Ryan William Thomas Duncan. <laughs> Alex Scott Yeager. <laughs> Katie Nicole Tucker. <laughs> Amy Sue Eichler. Huda Mohammed. <laughs> Lee 
Lindsay Marie Grahalski. Patrick Michael Batterson. William Franklin Seckler. Taylor James Frazier. Derek Dennis Moore. Ashley Lynn Mefford. Taylor Marie Winger. Jeremy Dean Taylor. Andrew McGregor Beer. Chase Lowell Snyder. Ashley Renee Cornish. Brandon James David Pope. Brittany Nicole Joyce. Benjamin Douglas Carr. Christopher Samuel Clausen. Derek Ryan Sims. Jeffrey Michael Fishero. Lane Michael Paradigm. John Paul Dow. Dylan Jacob Ostrander. Matthew Peter Skopinski. Richard Milton Bennett II. Clifton Edward Kerman. Ronald Payne Hathaway. Jamal Salanagi. Thomas James Waltke. Asher John Robert Welsh. Keeley Austin Gruner. Jamie Elizabeth Bragg. Caitlin Ray Kubashek. Jocelyn Kathleen Parker. Elizabeth Christine Patch. Megan Elizabeth Neary. Israel Ariola Mata. Fad Amin Mansour Ashel Hay.
Abdul Fattah Harbi Ahmed. Harith Nasser Al Kirsch. Adam Salah Baker Ahmed. Abdul Mugni Mohsen Ahmed. Hashim Mosa Mohsed Saeed. Ali Mohammed Ahmed. Gary Edward Hanning Jr. Caitlin Michelle Childress. Martin Lyndon Bentley Jr. Roxana Marie Russell. Ashley Nicole Wallace. Matthew Allen Bives. Chad Michael Stachowiak. Michael Anthony Winter. Joshua Lee Poli. Glenn Allen Bringman. Jeffrey James Anderson. Darcy Renee Stanton. James David Wolfgale. Samantha Elise Quick. Andrew Dean Clark. Leroy William Stanton, Jr. Nam Chi Tai. Sayaka Kodaira. Julia Diane Carpenter. Christopher Scott Holt. Haley Nicole Wendorf. Chelsea Ray Hallecky. Caitlin Nicole Cooper. William Scott Carey. Gina Marie Hageman. Rachel Nicole Deck. Joshua Aaron Abbey. Joshua Joseph Holberger. Aaron Michael Knaus. Nathaniel Andrew Wassa.
It's been my privilege to work for and with the best senior class to graduate from Coldwater High School. This is a proud and long-awaited moment for each of us and our families, and we deserve to celebrate this significant milestone. What we've learned over these past 12 years is not limited to information or statistics or facts. Instead, what we take with us is the ability to think for ourselves, to listen, ask questions, and then decide what the truth is. Take the advice of Albert Einstein, who said, the important thing is not to stop questioning. When we hold this diploma in our hands, we must realize that we are holding the opportunity to make a difference, the responsibility to make Cold Butter High School, our parents, and our community proud, and the obligation to make the most of what we've been given by giving to others. So today, as we leave Coldwater High School as a class for one last time, let us look back at our accomplishments with pride and at our mistakes with humor and forgiveness. Also, we remember our classmates, Corey and Jerry, who, although they are not here with us, have contributed to who we are and who we will become, and we offer our love to their families. We are a family of friends. dreams safely, in good health, and in the company of those you love. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Not quite enough smiles today, but a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, at the conclusion of the program, we will processional out just like we did uh, coming in, so please wait till the uh, students have uh, cleared the area. Secondly, um, you are all invited to meet with us in the cafeteria. We'll have refreshments, cookies, uh, some punch, those kind of things. I don't know if anybody's thirsty or not. Members of the class of 2007, I welcome you. As alumni of Coldwater High School, please rise.
Move your tassels to the left side and be presented to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2007. You will all be missed.